Uh, this is my gang. Uh, ready when you are. Sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Welcome to the medical examiner's office. I am Dr. Tom Gilson. I'm the county medical examiner and crime laboratory director. Uh, we're here today to talk about the fentanyl epidemic, which is certainly not in any uh, signs of abetting. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, deaths this year, including a couple of alerts, which seem to have been persistent for the entire month of July. Uh, here to welcome Senator Brown, uh, in addition to Mayor Bibb and our County Sheriff uh, Pertel, as well as our Adams Board Director Scott Asecki. Uh, I can't say, you know, enough to, you know, thank the folks who are here for their support in terms of trying to address this crisis. Uh, I think the numbers sometimes give us the impression that we're dealing with, you know, a worsening problem, which we are, but I think without the support of these individuals, it would be a far worse problem. Uh, we're projected to potentially eclipse 800 deaths from drug-related problems this year, and uh, that would be a new high, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, I appreciate the initiatives, and I'll turn things over to Senator Brown. Dr. Yolson, thank you, and uh, thanks to the staff here uh, for the work you do in a difficult time and difficult work. Thank you for that. Uh, and Sheriff and Mayor, thank you, and Director, thank you for, for being here also. Uh, last week, the Senate passed the bill, uh, my bill to target the entire illicit fentanyl supply chain from the precursor chemical supplies, the precursor chemicals coming out of China uh, to, the, uh, to the cartels that traffic the drugs, that manufacture and traffic the, judges, the, ju the drugs in Mexico. Part of the annual defense bill, uh, the, the senior Republican on the committee I chair and I negotiated uh, over a period of several weeks the, this fend off fentanyl bill. Um, we heard, I heard, I hear all the time in all counties in the state, it seemed to mostly start in southern Ohio and more rural areas. The, the addiction crisis of the last um, 15 or 20 years as it, as it got worse. Uh, and then fentanyl was mixed in and it got obviously appreciably worse as, as the staff here knows. Uh, and the, 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 uh, the, the toll it's taken on families, the toll it's taken on communities, and the toll it's taken really on our economic vitality um, as a state. In Cuyahoga County alone, 340 Ohioans died in the first half of this year from drug overdoses. The county medical, uh, the county medical uh, examiner has been clear that fentanyl is to blame for the spike of more potent fentanyl mixed in with other kinds of drugs when often the user uh, doesn't even know that. Uh, the Ohioans today with us are on the front lines of this. I particularly appreciate their, their work. It's why I introduced the Fend Off Fentanyl Act. Uh, it passed about out of our committee 23 to zero. Um, we then got it included in something called the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, Congress passes um, the NDAA every year um, to keep our national security, uh, to keep our armed forces strong, our national security uh, front and center, how important that is. Uh, and we knew that uh, this, this um, the controlling fentanyl and, and trying to, to control and reduce the number of, of deaths from overdose uh, was so important. It's, it's obviously a multifaceted issue. It's, it's scaling up treatment programs. Uh, it's giving police the tools they need, police and county sheriffs the tools they need, and, and providing the safety for the officers in terms of touching the substance and all that can happen there. Our bill will strengthen current law, it will direct the Treasury Department uh, to target and sanction and block the assets of transnational criminal organizations. Uh, we know there's a lot of money at stake. I just came from the FBI uh, with a briefing about cryptocurrency and how crypto is used uh, in money laundering and trafficking and in prostitution rings and kidnapping and all that. Uh, we try to get that under control and this bill will help us target, as I said, target the precursor chemicals in, in China and target the illicit organizations um, in Mexico. But we need, as I said, we need an all above approach uh, to combating this crisis, improving treatment options, doing more to prevent fentanyl from ever reaching our community. And this is, this is the first aggressive attempt 
to stop this stuff, to stop its production um, as we go after, the, go after the money, go after the pocketbooks, the wallets, if you will, of the people in China and in Mexico immensely profiting this, from this. We have a history of, of bipartisanship on this issue. I work with Senator Portman, who uh, was in the Senate with me for 12 years, to get resources in Ohio. Uh, we now have, we had 65 sponsors in the fentanyl, fentanyl bill. We expect to pass it, uh, the larger bill with this in it, some, sometime we hope in September, and get it to the president. We know how, how dangerous it is. We need to cut it off at the source. That's the purpose of this discussion and of this bill, uh, Mayor Bill. Thank you uh, so much, Senator Brown. We are just so lucky to have you as our voice in the Senate in Washington, D.C. I also want to just thank your team for your leadership on uh, this critical issue. Uh, we are so grateful for the work that the Senator has been doing to curb the flow of deadly fentanyl into our cities and our state. Uh, the magnitude of this problem in our city cannot be overstated. Uh, this is truly a public health emergency. In our city alone, we have lost 300 residents to fatal drug overdoses every year for the past three years. And in the month of June of 2023 alone, there were 47 fatal opioid overdoses in Cuyahoga County, with an additional 10 cases pending. And let's be clear, the vast majority of these overdose deaths are from fentanyl. Synthetic opioids are killing more Clevelanders than gun violence and traffic deaths combined. This was not the case 10 years ago when fentanyl deaths were rare. We need to stand up for the victims and the loved ones because they deserve our utmost serious attention. The Fentanyl, Fentanyl Act is a powerful tool to help us stop the flow of deadly synthetic opioids before they reach our residents. And while our federal partners are going after the source of these illegal, dangerous drugs, we are working with cross-sector partners from our health department to the county to make sure that our residents get the help and treatment they deserve. We're also improving public spaces, investing in our neighborhoods, promoting harm reduction strategies like the availability of Narcon and fentanyl test strips. And it is essential that we do everything as a city to restore hope in our communities. And I want to say to the folks that might be watching this press conference today that treatment works. Treatment works. I know from my own lived experience that Narcotics Anonymous, organizations like Y Haven can save lives. Seek out treatment to get what you need to get back on your feet because treatment can certainly give you more hope and make sure you get the support that you need and the resources that you need. Now I'll kick it off to Sheriff Patel. Sheriff. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Just want to uh, mention that it's very refreshing and reassuring to see uh, the Senator sponsor this bill because here's one something that's going to help stem, it, stem the flow. Stemming the flow is terrific. I uh, agree with the Mayor 100%. Treatment does work. I can tell you on the law enforcement side, uh, in partnership with all of our task forces, federal partners, state partners, local partners, uh, doing a lot of great work. Uh, on behalf of the heroin induced death investigation team, I know how hard they work. You folks here in this, in this building, see the end result, you know what that looks like. Their efforts are not in vain, but they are, um, the numbers are exponential. They have been exponential now for a while, and that's something that we continue to combat. Stemming that flow and adding additional teeth to the justice system is certainly gonna help. Uh, it was very refreshing to see that it also uh, allows for Treasury to mention some of these uh, funds, illicit funds in suspicious activity reports specifically. That is one of the strategies that we have used on the combating uh, terrorism, counterterrorism side. Suspicious activity reporting, very important. So if we can put that into this realm, not terrorism necessarily, but put into this realm, well now we have awareness, there's an entire mechanism and machine for that. So that is a significant improvement that's gonna be a game changer for law enforcement. I can tell you that throughout Cuyahoga County, the uh, issue with opioids uh, epidemic is, 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 doesn't stop at any one community. It's something that's not necessarily in the core city or any specific suburb. It crosses all demographics. And that's something everyone has to understand. All demographics and the partnerships that we have with our federal partners and local partners is probably one of the best 
because we know that it affects everyone equally and it doesn't stop at any of the borders. Terrific work is being done and we can have other conferences on that. But as far as this, this bill is absolutely gonna help with that flow coming in. The other side, obviously, uh, Adams Board is here. Uh, obviously, we talk about prevention, we talk about treatment, but very importantly, uh, there is a law enforcement component that have been working very hard on that and have also progressed, as the mayor mentioned. Narcan, test strips, all those things save lives. Officers on the ground save lives every day. However, you're still very busy here. So this will certainly enhance our ability to combat that. Uh, Commander Counts from uh, Cleveland Police. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. I'm Ron Counts, Commander of Bureau of Homeland Services, Cleveland Division of Police. On behalf of Chief Drummond, uh, our members are working hard every day. Uh, the partnerships, that's a critical aspect for us. And the partnerships not only start at the federal level, go all the way down to the local level, to the citizens themselves. So if you see someone in trouble, please take steps. Please let them use the test strips. Uh, if necessary, have Narcan on hand. Direct them to care. And that's number one. If you see that someone needs assistance, please step out and do that. Uh, if there is an emergency, reach out immediately. There's a whole variety of agencies uh, we're there to help uh, City of Cleveland Emergency Services. So again, we really appreciate the partnerships. Uh, that is the big significant factor. And again, the legislation is going a long way to help make our job easier and to save lives in the Cleveland area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Scott Osicki. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Adams Board of Cuyahoga County. And just so you know, we're responsible for the funding, the planning, and monitoring of public mental health and addiction prevention, crisis, treatment, and recovery services in Cuyahoga County. We know that, just kind of going on with the other theme here, is we know that addiction treatment works and add on there that people do recover. But individuals need to have that chance. It's important to understand that fentanyl doesn't discriminate and anyone can be a victim of fentanyl poisoning. It doesn't matter who you are, what age you are, where you live, or what drug you may be using. The entire street drug supply is contaminated, whether it's with counterfeit pills or mixed with meth, cocaine, or other stimulants. We also have to remember that these deaths are people, and any death is a tragedy. The best defense we have right now is combating this epidemic through harm reduction, and our board was actually a leader and pioneer in those harm reduction efforts. We certainly don't condone drug use. That's really important for us to say, but we want people to have that chance to get treatment and live in recovery. So that's why we supply the fentanyl test strips to allow someone the chance to know what substance they actually bought and make an informed decision about using that substance. We also encourage individuals, like we've heard, to carry naloxone because that can really help save a life uh, by stopping an overdose. However, the supply of fentanyl continuing to saturate the illicit drug supply on our streets, we continue to see more and more deaths. I thank Senator Brown and also Senator Scott for introducing the FEND Act, and we know that targets the supply of deadly drugs from even landing in our community. This is smart public policy that provides hope for our community by decreasing the possibility of fatal overdose. The FEND Act will lead to the best prevention and defense in the epidemic now that we're now having with fentanyl available at all, which will now allow us, oh, sorry about that, the FEND Act will lead to the best prevention and defense in this epidemic by not having fentanyl available on the streets at all, which will allow us and our providers to focus on providing treatment and helping people live in recovery. I also want to wrap up and add that if someone is ready to end their addiction, don't wait and call Cuyahoga County's 24-hour hotline, which is 216-623-6888, or simply dial or text 988. Thank you, everyone. Uh, happy to take any questions from the media. It's like it's like the the bill that Senator Vance and I are working on in East Palestine and rail safety. We we listen to the same people. Our job is to listen first of all, listen to the same people, and hear the same um, the same issues, and come together and work together. And 
on this one, every senator, every house member, every sheriff, every prosecutor, every uh, police officer, all of us hear the same, see the same facts and hear the same stories. It was pretty easy to come to an agreement. There were a few differences, but pretty easy to come to an agreement that, that this is an all above, all the above approach. I mean, you heard all of them pretty much say treatment works if you can get people into treatment. Uh, scaling up police, funding police departments so that they they can do this as safely as possible uh, and as aggressively as, the, as we need and uh, going at the source. We've not really tried to go after the source, go, go to the source like this. It's been more of how do, you, how do you decrease demand? And that's a big, big, big part of it, maybe the most important, but you also need to go, to over, go after the supply and that's what this bill does. Well, I, I've done this, I was in Columbus recently, did it in Cincinnati recently. Um, it's everywhere. It's, you know, the, 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 uh, the OxyContin and that, those, those drugs, the, the, the problems resulting from that addiction kind of started in southern Ohio in rural areas and worked its way up to the cities. This has sort of been everywhere in the country, everywhere in this state. Um, our problems aren't worse than other states, and Cleveland's aren't worse than other cities or other communities, but... Uh, it's a serious problem, so I, I want to carry this message everywhere we can. Another quick question, you know, targeting the suppliers, um, hopefully, I think the hope is that it could be effective because there's less of the drugs available in the community, but at the same time, you're going to have people who are addicted to these substances that are looking, still looking for that drug. Um, are we concerned at all about So, you know, unfortunately, we did see, right, remember that it was uh, heroin, right, when the opiate supply was cut off, then it went to heroin, but now we're seeing the fentanyl in there. People aren't dying of heroin overdoses anymore. But the most important thing we want people to know is that treatment works and people do recover. So that's what we want people to know that that, this, that, that can happen. You know, and then, you know, during the pandemic, uh, we did see, right, a, um, a drop in people using opiates or heroin. So, you know, it wasn't available on the streets then. So if we get this out, that hopefully, right, that there will not be another drug to follow. Additionally, on that, on that, we know that there's often replacement drugs. However, the, the increase of drug courts is going to be very beneficial. As drug courts uh, proliferate throughout the county and, and, and the region, uh, we recognize that there is an addiction problem. We have to do something different with them. It's, it's a different off-ramp for individuals. Instead of just punishment, there's something else for them. So I think that if we partner with the drug courts and they allow them to also enhance their service delivery and their partnerships in service delivery, that will certainly help, help the epidemic. But again, it is a just all of government approach and I want to commend Senator, uh, Senator once again, uh, the fact that it is bipartisan and, and ensures it is going to be something that's sustainable regardless of what changes there are uh, going forward. So that's what I mentioned it. Thank you. It is. Uh, regrettably, the families are uh, the biggest, uh, take the biggest hit here when it's a, a overdose or a fatal overdose, either one. And when the families come to the hospitals and they're looking for some sort of, of relief, how could this happen? And many times it's a, uh, I never knew. Majority of family members is, I never knew. Well, some may have some suspicions, but most of it is a total surprise. And now they're faced with either a critical overdose or a fatal overdose. And most families, vast majority of families, are not prepared for what comes with that. The emotion, the uh, all of a sudden planning for services, all these things, they're thrown into a world they are totally unprepared for. And that, it, talk about the effect. So couple that with uh, just a, I hate to say regular overdose, an overdose, which causes the response in the family, oh my God, what happened there in the hospital? A couple of those, then you have a fatal overdose. Uh, really has an impact on family and it affects everything. Uh, it affects employment, it affects childcare, it affects a million different things because it affects the family dynamic. That family is now suffering, grieving, and not functioning properly. That affects everything. And then I believe you have one, oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
Please. Yes, sir. So it's also important for family and the community to know that addiction is a biological based brain disease, right? You know, just like alcoholism as well, right? So people may say, oh, that person took that illicit drug or they took that first drink, but none of us know how our body is gonna react to that to become addicted. So that's why we have to reduce the stigma of addictions and to let people know that you can get treatment and recover. And then, right, and it, it's, it does impact the family, it, uh, it impacts the workforce as well. So it's a, a whole community issue and people have to know that it's okay. Uh, it's, it's an illness just like cancer or an illness just like diabetes and it takes time to recover from and uh, there's no shame in seeking help. It brings that up, I have one more point from Scott's comments. And it, the only good news out of this is it's, it's made us understand that mental, mental illness is just another illness. It shouldn't have the stigma attached. My, my wife, who is a writer, has written about this. Her, her brother died by suicide. Um, he couldn't deal with his alcoholism. He died at the, at the, in his early 50s. And we don't talk about that enough in this society, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's some kind of addiction. And um, the more we talk about it, that's one of the reasons we do these discussions like this publicly. Uh, the more people will come forward with treatment and not be embarrassed by mental illness in their family. Uh, thank you all. Appreciate you being here. Thanks. I think you hit a nerve with that question because I know Mayor wants to talk about it too. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I have to kind of give a shout out to my staff, several of whom go out to death scenes where we encounter people who've overdosed and they're probably the most, you know, qualified to talk about just how much, you know, immediate sorrow this brings. Um, I would add, you know, on a personal note, today would have been a family member's 34th birthday. He died at 22 with a drug overdose. It's called his mother's birthday. And, you know, I can't imagine as a parent anything more terrible than to have a baby born on your own birthday and to die before you do just horrifying and if you don't you know see that kind of stuff it seems somewhat you know theoretical but the devastation emotionally of this crisis stays with me every day uh, and uh, I'll pass it over to Senator uh, to Mayor Pitt. Real, real quick I would just quick, quickly say unlike other phenomena we've seen uh, throughout history uh, with drug overdoses and the epidemic of drugs in our city and our country uh, fentanyl is affecting every income spectrum every race, color, and creed, every part of our community. And it's so important that we have an honest conversation as the leader of the Adams Board mentioned about the power of treatment. You have to change the stigma of treatment. And when family members see those signs, uh, they gotta step up and have hard conversations and have those interventions to save their loved ones because treatment certainly does work and there are a wealth of resources out there for folks to get the support they need to recover from their addiction. Thanks, everybody.